can you see what now? Now it's lovely you brought up this example because can you see what we do? Can you see what we do? And all of us have been guilty of doing this, right? It's not something that's you know, yeah. We 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 just go. We just say yes. The law of attraction brought me this thing. That has nothing to do with me, unless it's good, of course. <laughs> if it's good, it had to have something to do with me, right? But if, if, it, if it's like uncomfortable to me, then it can't have had anything to do with me. And the truth is it's got everything to do with you. Everything to do with you. And you need to at least start admitting that to yourself even. Right? God's laws are perfect. They expose everything. But you can see what we do is we, we feel the top level emotion... In this case, annoyance, which is just an anger-based emotion, which is just separating us from the underlying causal emotion. And yet, in your discussion, you were talking, talking, and then all of a sudden you start talking about your dad and perfection. And there's the key to everything, but you don't want to feel it. And, and the next words were like, yeah, but it's no big deal. right? It's a huge deal. Like being expected as a little child to do everything perfectly from day one, that's a huge deal. Like that, that is a terrible burden that you place on your children. Right? Your father placed a terrible burden on you. Now, I'm not condemning or judging your father. Right? He has his own emotional reasons why he did that, and he needs to experience those, live or past. He needs to experience those. The truth is, that it's a terrible burden to place that on you as a child and you are not letting yourself experience that because you want to believe your father was good so you won't allow yourself to believe or to feel the emotion of how terrible you felt having to be perfect all the time so go there forget about and this is one thing I like about the John Bradshaw book because it says in there your parents' emotions or reasons are superfluous. Are what? Superfluous. It, they, it is of no consequence in your d discussion of your own emotion. Because if you justify your parents, what are you doing? You're justifying the reason for your emotion. In the, in the end, what are you doing? Tuning out of your own emotion. You're minimising your own emotion. Right? You go to the. With understanding where they were at, perhaps? You will only story. understand after you've dealt with your emotion, not before. See, what we do is we intellectually skip over everything, <coughs> skip over all the emotion, and we say, no, no, I really want to understand my parents. They were nice parents and they were loving. They did their best for me and all that stuff, right? And all of that might be true, but what you've just done is avoided all of your own painful emotions. Because you're now saying... Because they were nice and they did their best, I'm not allowed to feel what I feel. And what you're going to need to learn to do is, I'm allowed to feel what I feel. I'm allowed to know what I know. I'm allowed to think what I think. I'm allowed to... These are what you will need to be allowed to do if you're going to feel your emotions. So one of the biggest blocks you have right now is all of this justification that you have about your parents and how they treated you. That's a huge block. Yeah? Big one. Okay, you're saying we our own healing to face that, but not to, that doesn't mean to blame. As soon as you blame, you're now projecting. Yeah. So, as soon as, so, so I can state the truth. My mother never hugged me my entire life. And feel it. And feel what that felt like. Without right? blame. Without blaming my mother. She had her own reasons to do that. Right? But, if I want to blame my mother, I'm allowed to do that too, if I want. But you're never going to get to the bottom of the underlying emotion. But you can blame her for six months if that's what you feel like doing first. You're allowed to do that too. But it would be better if you can connect to the underlying emotion was that feeling of, like, what does it mean if your mother's never hugged you? What does it mean? So that's a more ideal way. Yeah. So let yourself feel that. Now, my mother was 16 when she gave birth to me, like, and her mother was 16. So do you think they had many mothering skills? Like, my grandmother was 32 when I was born. Right? 
So, so do you think they've had they, they've had many mothering schools to pass down to each other? Obviously not, hey. Mm -hmm. And then my grandmother lived in this abusive, violent, alcoholic man who constantly abused her and beat her up and everything. You know, so of course my mother doesn't know what love is really. Mm -hmm. so by, but that's immaterial. Why are you understanding that about your mother and your grandmother? Mm -hmm. Does that empower you to work through your process? No. no. Or is it irrelevant? Often it's the opposite. It shuts down the process. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Because what it does is I'm justifying them all the time and what am I doing when I'm doing that? Not denying yeah. your own. Denying. Yeah. I'm not allowed to feel what I feel because they're nice. Yeah. Yeah. And my mum is nice. But there's some terrible emotions that I've yeah. had to deal with because of her treatment of me. Mm. And there's some terrible emotions you've had to deal with even when your mum and dad were nice. Mm. Because they denied those emotions mm. that you now have to deal with. Mm. How they treated you. And if you're constantly justifying them, you're not going to look at yourself. Mm. Uh, you need to state the truth about everything. Mm. 